On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about how early we start rehab after surgery, we talk about exercise science degrees, and we talk about contrast baths. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Welcome back, everybody, to this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. I am here at Champion PT and Performance with Lenny Macrina, Dave Tilly, and our cast of, of um, characters from uh, that somebody else uh, said in the past, the characters of students. We have Evan Eleven from Sac State and Jake and Bake from University of Kentucky here uh, to, to ask us some questions from you guys in the audience. So, um, yeah, I think that was a good. Do it. That was good, right? I like it. Let's Where'd just do it. Let's do it. All right. Gas Jake and Bakes. First question. All right, question one. Mike from Springfield, Springfield uh, Massachusetts. Ask. Uh, speak up. Speak, right. We want him to speak up. Right. What let's think, let's encourage him. It, it was common to have a post-op day one patient, such as a rotator cuff tear. Um, it's not uncommon. However, back up north, I feel that though some surgeons are more conservative, and some patients wait four weeks to initiate therapy. Any thoughts on this issue backed by your opinion, research, or both in regards to outcomes? So rotator cuff repair surgery, um, do we start day one or do we start week four or whatever? I'm gonna guess if it's a that? Springfield College student. Yes, yeah, Springfield. And it's Mike. They went to either Birmingham, Alabama I think, for uh, I think clinical they did. I think I, did, I think I deleted it to take out the bias, Which but whatever. Which is mild stomping ground, <laughs> but um, Len, you want to handle this I mean, one? yeah, I, I dealt with that for, I think, 12 or 13 years of my life. And from what I saw, people did very well. Uh, moving back uh, to New England, Boston, after that, um, it's been eye-opening for me. We don't get a lot of post-op people here just by the nature of our business and our model, but we do, and we have a few right now. Uh, we try to work with it. We try to chat with the docs and communicate and get them in as quickly as possible. It seems like the waiting time is like 10 to 14 days and even out to four to six weeks, which for me is frustrating. And you try to educate the docs and you try to chat with the docs casually with research and communicate with the patient. We get somebody that's about to have surgery, uh, knee surgery, and we're trying to communicate through the family to the doc that it's safe to get the joint moving. We do it all the time. There's limited research on mostly everything. Rotator cuff seems to be something that we're trying to research on early range of motion, and it seems to be safe. Uh, just long, longer term studies, um, one, two years out, showing retail rates are basically the same with early mobilization versus delayed, for example. So yes, I get your frustration, Mike, um, because I dealt with it for a long time. And not just recently, I'm talking, when I first got to Birmingham in 2003 or whatever it was, we were doing it right away. You know, you were there too, and it was fine. You know, Dr. Andrews, Dr. Dugas, Dr. Kane, all those guys were advocating it. So I think it can happen. I think it just comes down to research and education for PTs and and MDs. I don't know. If yeah, I I think this started because we're getting. I think I think we're getting a little more conservative with rotator cuff repairs because the physicians are. I mean, I don't want to say scared, but they're they're you know the outcome studies on rotator cuff repairs are showing that a lot of them re tear. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to do their best to prevent that. And as physical therapists, we're trying to say we can actually help in this acute phase versus be harmful down the road. And the reason why they're re tearing isn't us. It isn't because right. of the physical therapy. And, we're, and research is starting to show that we're trying to get that across. But that doesn't mean that the physician isn't going to be conservative. So I, I think what happens, you got to think from the physician's point of view sometimes, they want an, an MRI or an ultrasound in a year or two to show an intact cuff. They don't really care about anything else. So, you know, they don't care about how they feel the first few weeks. Right. They don't care about their motion in the first six months or so. So for them, I think it's a little bit, you know, different. So I think that's why it occurs. It just comes down to, um, you know, working with, with good physicians and educating the other ones as best you can. And, you know, you know, hopefully you'll make some progress, but, you know, you don't always do. Yeah, you do your best. And I know insurance is an issue. That's what some docs claim that, that they want to hold off to save visits for when the patient needs it. But I think they need it. Pretty yeah. early on. Post-op day one, like I said, we did it. Maybe it was aggressive. I don't know. But I think day three, four, five is definitely safe. Passive motion, EMG-wise, shows that it's safe to get the cuff moving. So, you know, it's there's numerous studies have shown that. So I don't know what the, the holdup is besides the retail rates. 
Yeah. The toxic and, and, and speculation user. that that early rehab. We're too aggressive as therapists. Yeah. Right. You know, I think there is a perception that some PTs can be too aggressive, and I definitely agree. Um, it comes down to us educating and you know showing our value to the docs and the patients. Love it. All right. Jake right. and Bake, let's do it. Pardon me if this isn't correct, but uh, Sean from India asks, yeah. I'm currently preparing for the ACE PT course and would further like to go to CSES, et cetera. I would like to enter the field of sports fitness and aspire to become a trainer for uh, top sports teams. So, since I am from a non-medical background, I would like your advice on whether a diploma in exercise science would really help me expand my knowledge as a fitness professional. Awesome. All right. So to clarify too, so you're going to get certified as a personal trainer using, he uses the abbreviations PT, I'm sure, but as a personal trainer through ACE. Um, and I guess the question is to, to move up in life as a personal trainer, strength coach, should you get an exercise science degree? What do you think, Dave? I personally, I mean, I'm still kind of going through this now because I'm in this process as well. I personally think it's better to have your baseline I guess certifications and then just like dump your money and your time into con ed. I really do. I think that I'm moving more away from trying to get letters behind the name and you know certifications more to like spend your money on books and courses and people that are knowledgeable in the field and that can teach you about where to go kind of and then go from there personally. But um, I mean I see the value and I guess the perception to consumers about having more credentialing. I would say personally go the route of spending your money on con ed and finding people who are intelligent in the field. Yeah, I would agree. I would also research because if you don't have an undergrad degree, like a bachelor's degree, some jobs specifically say you are required to have a bachelor's degree. I was going to ask for your degree. I was going to ask that with exercise or to to get into a sports team or right. sports setting or whatever. You call. said do you they think may that have might minimum be? qualifications, and I right. would look into that because I hate for you to go through the whole process and you go to apply because it's going to come down to who you know, uh, your experiences, who can give you a break and get you in a position. All that's fine. And you may be able to achieve that without a bachelor's degree, but some high-level facilities or teams may have a minimum requirement of a bachelor's degree. Just saying. So yeah, I would I look into that. I don't even think you can get your CSES. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you say you were going to need a bachelor's degree? Yeah. I can be in anything, but you yeah. need a bachelor's degree. Oh, yeah. So, so, I, so maybe he has a bachelor's, mm -hmm. just oh. not exercise gotcha. science. Okay. Yep. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'd, I'd never discourage you from, from uh, improving yourself and getting an education like that. I think Dave's absolutely right. It comes down to do you need the exercise science degree or do you need the, the knowledge? And, right. and I think that goes to you. So um, Awesome. Jake and Bay. All right, last question. Samantha from Baltimore asks, are contrast baths really an effective method to reduce inflammation? Ah, are contrast baths effective at reducing inflammation? Dum, dum, dum. I just want to see how long you guys would sit there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, well, it's. Can I rephrase your question? Can we say are contrast baths baths effective at helping people feel better? Because the question is, do they do they do you feel better after? Or does it actually reduce inflammation so that was at the my cellular initial, level? That was my initial thought. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I, is there any why. research? I don't know. That's why I really stayed quiet. I don't know it, anecdotally, I would say research. maybe. You know, I don't know the whole concept of. I mean, I understand the concept of it, but I don't understand the the literature that's out there because I haven't really looked recently to see. No. Yeah. Um, I, but yeah, like yeah. Mike said, if if the athlete is needs to do it because he, he or she has to just. It's something they've always done. It makes them feel better. I'm not going to argue with it. I'm not gonna, certainly not going to get in their head. Have you ever done one? Uh, I have. Have uh, you? Yeah. And it's fine. I love them. I you know, think they're yeah, great. Absolutely. I, I know every player that did them yeah. said they felt awesome afterwards. Yeah. Totally refreshed. They feel good. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what the underlying mechanism is. I don't, I don't know, know it either. Yeah. Um, so I don't. I don't know. I, I'm a big fan. I, I don't yeah. know if it if it on the cellular level helps reduce inflammation. I know people feel better after. They feel more refreshed after. Right. Um, I mean, you could do that with a lot of different mechanisms, but, you know, I don't know. I guess that's, I don't know the science. Yeah. Nor do I. Yeah, so I don't know if the science is out there quite for that yet. I mean, the concept and the theories were probably overcompensating on that with the theories that were like we're flushing the blood in and out with the hot cold, that type thing. I don't know right. if it's quite that detailed. I don't know if I believe in that, but I, I do know it's, uh, you know, people feel great afterwards. So if it's something you like, I, I definitely encourage you to do it. Um, but, you know, I, I would leave it at that. Yeah. Right? Definitely. Awesome. Is that three, Jake and Bake? Three. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Jake and Bake did a great job, everyone. Everybody give Jake and Bake a round of applause at home.
<laughs> awesome. <laughs> like seventh, seventh green pot. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down, Nate. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Thanks so much again. Uh, go to MikeRinald.com and click on the podcast uh, link there in the sidebar and uh, ask us away some questions. Leave us a nice review on iTunes, and we will see you guys on a future episode. Thanks so much.